Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum students. Uh, let's continue with the topic that we have been uh, discussing since last two weeks. In the previous lectures we talked about uh, evolution. Uh, how is it related with phylogenetics? Why phylogenetics is important? Why do, do, why do we care about it? Then we talked about phylogenetic trees. Uh, how many different types of trees are there? We briefly discussed the, uh, those, those trees and we also talked about uh, different terminologies uh, that are important in uh, while reading a phylogenetic tree and in the previous lecture we also made a tree by using physical characteristics of, uh, of, 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 of different organisms and we saw how a tree can be constructed using uh, those physical characteristics. Uh, so it was a very crude way of making a phylogenetic tree. Today we are going to uh, go deep into phylogenetics and we will see how phylogenetic trees are actually made. And uh, in this, uh, in, in, in this uh, today's lecture, uh, we will uh, be taking sequences for making phylogenetic trees. So constructing a phylogenetic tree is not a straightforward task. Okay. For any set of given sequences, multiple number of trees can be generated and our aim is not just to construct a phylogenetic tree uh, using information given in those sequences, but it's important that we construct the phylogenetic tree which is biologically significant. That is the correct tree among many different possible trees that can be made. Okay. So it's not a very straightforward approach. Uh, for constructing a tree, uh, they, they, it can be divided into five five steps. Okay, so the first one is choosing the right molecular markers. The second one, the second step is performing multiple sequence alignment. The third step is choosing a model of evolution. The fourth step is determining a tree building method, and the last step is to assess the tree reli reliability. And we are going to uh, discuss these points one by one, and we'll try to do it in detail. So the choice of a correct molecular marker is the first crucial step in uh, constructing a phylogenetic tree that is biologically correct. And the choice of molecular marker depends upon the properties of the sequence and purpose of your study. You can use either nucleotide sequence or amino acid sequence for your study. Uh, for studying closely related species such as if you if you want to uh, study evolutionary analysis of different individuals within a population, uh, you can use nucleotide sequences because they evolve more rapidly. But if you are studying distantly related species, uh, it's, it's better to use amino acid sequences because uh, they are relatively more conserved. Uh, for nucleotide sequences, you can use mitochondrial DNA sequences or ribosomal RNA sequences. So if you are uh, uh, if you are studying a closely related uh, individual, like uh, if you are uh, if you are uh, interested in analyzing uh, different individuals of the same population, you can use um, um, mitochondrial DNA sequences because uh, they are uh, they evolve more rapidly. But if you stick if you if you are studying distantly related species, uh, such as you are uh, studying uh, mouse and humans, uh, they are distantly related and still you want to stick to the nucleotide sequences, you can use ribosomal RNA sequences because there is a strong selection pressure on these sequences and these sequences tend to evolve slowly as compared to mitochondrial DNA. Uh, then uh, keep in mind that there is a concept of codon biasness in different uh, species. If you recall what you studied in Introduction to Molecular Biology course, uh, you, might, uh, you might remember that uh, a single amino acid can be can have more than uh, one codons like leucine can be coded by six different codons similarly arginine can be coded by six different codons and valine can be coded by four different codons so the uh, but uh, a species will uh, will use only one codon uh, for an amino acid okay so there is a codon biasness in different uh, species so if you are if you are comparing different species and you, you find some 
variation in the sequences because of codon biasness then that variation that you are observing is not uh, relatable to evolution uh, it's just because of codon biasness so you have to be careful about that then keep in uh, keep in mind that uh, mitochondrial dna uh, has a different genetic code as uh, compared to genetic code uh, by that is in uh, uh, nuclear dna okay so the genetic code is almost almost universal uh, which means that proteins encoded by uh, nuclear genome follow universal code but proteins that are encoded by uh, mitochondrial DNA they follow slightly different genetic code uh, which is evident from uh, this table you can see uh, here that some of the amino acid uh, codons that are stop codons in uh, mitochondrial code uh, but they code for some uh, amino acid in universal code uh, similarly some stop codons in the mitochondrial code they code for some amino acid in the universal genetic code okay so if you are using mitochondrial dna sequence uh, for your study it's better to first translate those sequences into uh, proteins uh, amino acid sequences sometimes they are uh, in many cases they are better uh, uh, choice to be used because there is a degeneracy of a genetic code uh, degeneracy of genetic code means that a genetic code is a degenerate uh, there can be a different nucleotide at position number three of a genetic code and difference in one nucleotide at position number three of a genetic code uh, may result to a silent mutation meaning that uh, the change in that position position three of the uh, 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 codon can have no implication on the amino acid amino acid remains the same okay and secondly amino acids uh, there are 61 different codons for uh, 20 different amino acids so uh, these properties of proteins make them uh, better in many cases to be used as uh, molecular markers uh, similarly protein alignments they are they are more sensitive uh, they have high signal to noise ratio okay uh, as compared to DNA uh, alignments uh, this is because uh, proteins they have uh, they have 20 different characters whereas uh, DNA has only four characters uh, you can understand this with an example uh, that two randomly related DNA sequences uh, if, if gaps are allowed in, in alignment then you can have up to 50% identities when, when gaps are allowed in the DNA sequences but if uh, gaps are uh, you know allowed in uh, uh, protein sequences uh, then only 10% of the proteins they will have uh, identities but even uh, if gaps are allowed these gaps become becomes you know irrelevant uh, because uh, when the when gaps are introduced in a protein sequences it will shift the frame there will be frame shifting uh, and that makes it biologically irrelevant uh, in DNA sequences uh, if, if you are more interested in uh, positive evolution or, or, or negative evolution uh, I mean positive selection and negative selection then uh, there's a concept of synonymous and non synonymous uh, substitutions in DNA sequences synonymous uh, substitution are those substitutions where change in the uh, DNA sequence at some point uh, does not change the corresponding protein uh, it's it's a silent mutation and because of that mutation there will be no change in the uh, final proteins and non synonymous substitutions are those substitutions that will result change in uh, in, in proteins so if if you find that there are some uh, there are more substitutions in those part of the uh, DNA which encodes proteins okay so uh, this shows that uh, this region of the DNA uh, is undergoing um, uh, evolution at higher rate and that is known as positive selection or adaptive evolution but in case of synonymous uh, substitutions uh, 
you will uh, this this means that this region of DNA is not you know contributing to evolution and uh, this 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 is known as negative or uh, purifying selection sequence alignment is the second important step and it is perhaps uh, the most critical step in constructing a phylogenetic tree uh, why it's critical because alignment uh, establishes correspondence in evolution so if there is correct alignment it will give you genealogically relevant tree and if the alignment is wrong you will get a wrong tree okay so multiple alignment methods should be used uh, we, we should not just stick to one uh, alignment method multiple alignment methods should be used to align the sequences and those uh, alignments should be inspected and compared carefully before proceeding forward uh, we will inshallah uh, use some uh, multiple alignment tools uh, when we uh, you know reach uh, the lab portion of this course the third step in constructing a phylogenetic tree is the choice of evolution model we will not go into detail uh, about what's an evolution model just give you a brief o brief overview uh, about what what does evolution model means so there are two different models the first one th that you can see on the left side is duke scanter model and according to duke scanter model all nucleotides have equal substitution rate okay so a to g substitution or a to c or a to t uh, g to c g to t and so on and so forth all these substitutions they have uh, equal substitution rates whereas there's another model known as kimura model and according to this model transitions uh, that are represented by alpha in this uh, table uh, they are more prevalent than transversions that are represented by a beta okay so according to kimura model transitions are more prevalent than transversion and this is uh, biologically uh, correct as compared to duke scanter model the fourth step in uh, constructing a phylogenetic phase uh, tree building uh, selecting the tree building method so there are three main methods uh, number one is distance based method number two is maximum parsimony method and number three is maximum likelihood method so we'll try to discuss uh, these three methods um, later distance based method of constructing a phylogenetic tree uh, is a method where we calculate the distance between each pair of sequence suppose you have uh, a different sequences of length n so you can calculate the distance between two sequences by counting the number of mismatches okay so suppose you have uh, 10 different sequences uh, you'll try you'll compare uh, two sequences one at a time and those two sequences which have minimum number of mismatches they will be uh, considered as neighbors okay and these two neighbors will be paired together and they will be joined by a node you know what is a node we have uh, talked about uh, this term in our previous lecture okay so these two neighbors they will be joined by a node and the process will be repeated uh, rep uh, several times until full tree is made for distance based methods of constructing phylogenetic tree we have uh, uh, different algorithms or we have different methods uh, which are you know which we have uh, which have different variations among uh, those methods but here uh, we'll just talk about three methods that are widely used uh, number one is unweighted pair group method with arithmetic mean or simply UPGMA uh, number two is Fitch and Marco Liash and number three is neighbor joining method in today's lecture we'll only focus on UPGMA method and rest of the other method and uh, rest of the steps will be discussed in the uh, next part of the lecture the UPGMA method of constructing a phylogenetic tree is a simple method which assumes a molecular clock uh, by molecular clock we mean that the rate of change is constant in sister species and here the branch lengths will be equal uh, and you know that when branch lengths are equal it means that we can have uh, 
some idea about relatedness of different species but evolutionary distance uh, will not be known in this case okay so in this method we start with the distance matrix uh, just like uh, we used to have matrix in uh, sequence alignments and R in structure prediction here also will uh, fill up a matrix uh, which will which is called a distance matrix in this case and will pair up the most closely related taxa uh, with each other and then treat this pair as a new taxa and then repeat the process again in this uh, uh, example uh, I will again uh, encourage you to pause this video here and uh, take a piece of paper and uh, try to uh, uh, fill up the matrix and uh, make the uh, phylogenetic tree with me so that you understand it uh, clearly so to uh, construct a tree using U UPGMA method consider these six, six sequences A, B, C, D, E and F and uh, to relate what we are studying now and what we have uh, already studied consider these sequences uh, to be corresponding to different build morphology of Darwin's finches so uh, we already we have already discussed that uh, according to different habitat the, the build morphology of Darwin's finches uh, is specific to different uh, specific habitat because the food there is different so all these sequences they correspond to a specific build morphology and uh, our aim here is to construct a phylogenetic tree to see which two species are more closely related and which ones are distantly related okay so uh, let's start constructing the tree so uh, we'll we'll uh, fill up this distance matrix and uh, it's it's easy to uh, uh, fill up this matrix because uh, to fill up this matrix all you have to do is compare two sequences and while comparing two sequences count the number of mismatches so first we'll compare sequence A with sequence B so if you closely uh, you know uh, see the sequence A and B you will see that there are nine mismatches or not nine nucleotides uh, positions they are different when A and B are compared when A and C are compared together we we observe that there are only two mismatches A and D we see that there are four mismatches for A and E we have nine mismatches and A and F we have 11 mismatches okay so we have uh, filled up the first row now I'll I want you all to pause this video here and fill up the rest of the matrix and once you have filled up the matrix then again uh, start this video and see if you have filled up the matrix correctly or not okay I'll just now write the values here uh, so when we compare B with C we have nine mismatches then we have six then we have two mismatches then we have eleven uh, then five nine eleven six ten and ten so we have filled up the matrix now and next step is to uh, start constructing the phylogenetic tree here so as you can see that this value and this value is the least value meaning that uh, when uh, we compare sequence A with sequence C we see only two mismatches and when we compare sequence B with sequence uh, E 
uh, there are only two mismatches so a and c they are most closely related species and b and e they are closely related so we construct the phylogenetic tree start constructing the phylogenetic tree by putting a and uh, c together and we'll connect them with uh, uh, connect these two neighboring uh, species and then we have b and e and we'll connect these two okay so we have completed the first step of tree construction now now we'll move to the next step of uh, tree construction so now we know that uh, a and c they are closely related and b and e they are closely related now so we'll use the previous matrix to fill up the next matrix and the next matrix what we will do we will group a and c together okay uh, because here we'll i uh, will now consider a and c to be a single taxa and then compare the distance of a c to other individual species here and how to calculate we'll take the average values i'll show you how to calculate the values here so distance between a c to b we have to calculate the distance between a c to b so distance between a and b is 9 and distance between c and b is also 9 so we'll take average of these two values 9 plus 9 divided by 2 is equal to 9 so we'll write 9 here okay the next step is to calculate the distance of a c to d distance between a and d is 4 and distance between c and d is 5 so average of these two values will be 4.5 so I'll write 4.5 here next step will calculate the distance of a c to e so a to e is 9 and c to e is also 9 so average of these two values will be 9 similarly a to f is 11 and c to f is also 11 so the average value is also 11 so this is how we take uh, the average uh, 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 sorry uh, this is how we uh, calculate the values for a group with an individual species so what we are doing we are taking the average of two values here so rest of the uh, matrix is simple we have uh, 6 2 11 then we have 6 10 and then again we have 10 so we have filled up this matrix okay so uh, just like in the previous uh, matrix we grouped together a and c and considered it as a single taxa in the next matrix we'll also group together b and e and consider it as a single taxa and now we will try to fill up this matrix okay so the procedure is same we have to take the average of the two values so let's uh, start filling the matrix first we have to uh, calculate the distance between ac to be we know that ac to b is 9 and ac to e is also 9 so the average of these two values is 9 ac to d is 4.5 and ac to f is 11 okay i'll change the color now uh, this one next we have to calculate the distance between b e to d b to d is 6 and e to d is 
also 6. So the average of these two values is 6, we'll write 6 here. The distance between BE to F is uh, B to F is 11 and E to F is 10. The average of these two values is 10.5, we'll write 10.5 here. And then we have D to F value which is 10. So now we have filled up this matrix and if we observe here uh, we can see that AC the distance between AC to D is least here sorry I'll highlight it with this one okay. so this is the least distance which shows that we uh, already know that A is closely related to C and B is closely related to E. This is already known uh, by filling up the previous matrices. And from this matrix, from this matrix, we see that AC is closely related to D, so we can group D with AC. Okay, and then repeat the same procedure and fill up the next matrix so uh, we know that we now know that AC is closely related to D and B and E they are closely related okay so the phylogenetic tree is not uh, finished yet and uh, will fill up another matrix which is even smaller and here we are going to consider A, C, D as a single taxa and B, E uh, grouped together. Now I will not calculate the values because you know how to calculate the values. Uh, you should try yourself. I'll just write the values here. So A, C, D to B, A distance is 7.5. A, C, D to F distance is 10.5. And B, E to F distance is 10.5 so by looking at this uh, matrix we can observe that the group ACD is closely related to the group BE so we can join these two together and now only one uh, sequence of one species is left that is F and that can be accommodated here so uh, this is how you can uh, construct a phylogenetic tree using upgma method and uh, again uh, if, if you recall the example of darwin's finches uh, okay so species a is closely related to species c and a and c they both are related to d similarly b and e they are closely related and this group is related to ACD and F is an outlier okay. so uh, I hope now you have understood how UPGMA method works and how we can construct a phylogenetic tree using a using UPGMA method uh, next time inshallah we'll we'll uh, try to understand uh, the other algorithms other methods to construct uh, phylogenetic tree and uh, by next uh, lecture inshallah we'll We'll finish this. Uh, we'll finish off with the phylogenetics topic. Till then, Allah Hafiz.